On this day, Sriman Pandit was smiling. And the other devotees, like Srivast, said, You are smiling. You look very happy. What is this? He said, For very good reason, I'm happy. Because Goranga, after coming back from Gaya, he's become a devotee. What we've been praying for, what we've been doing our puja for, what we've been chanting for, what we've been crying for, that Nimai becomes a devotee. He's become a devotee. He's no longer proudly defeating people, challenging people in various grammatical puzzles. No, he's only chanting Krishna's name. I've never seen anything like this. He must be Krishna himself. There's torrents of tears falling from his eyes. His voice is choked up. His limbs are trembling. Sometimes he falls unconscious in ecstasy. He's decorated with love that no one in this world has ever seen. Nimai has become a devotee. And he's asked to meet a few of us at Suklambar Brahmachari's house this morning. When Srivas Pandit heard this, he smiled. His heart was erupting in ecstasy. And he said, may our family increase. Now that Nimai is a devotee, the family of Vaishnavas, the arrogance and the materialism and the uselessness of life of the people of Navadweep and the people of the world will be transformed because Nimai Pandit has become a devotee. Those few devotees went to Suklambar Brahmachari's house. Goranga, he came to share his heart, to share the ecstatic sadness of his heart. He started crying immediately. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? He leaned against a pillar, and he kind of cracked the pillar. And his hair was all disheveled, and he fell to the ground. And all the devotees started crying, and they all fell to the ground. And secretly hiding in that house was Gadadhar Pandit. When he heard Nimai, crying out, where is Krishna? In such love and separation, he fell to the ground unconscious. And when Lord Chaitanya came to consciousness, the rest of them came to consciousness, and they were all crying and crying. And Lord Chaitanya said, is anyone else here? Sukhambar Brahmachari and the others said, Gadadhar Pandit. Lord Chaitanya went to Gadadhar and spoke his heart. He said, Gadadhar Pandit, you are the most fortunate From your very birth and throughout every stage of your life, you have been renounced from material pursuits. You've been completely devoted to Krishna. But I am so unfortunate. I uselessly wasted so much of my life in futile academic studies. But then by my great fortune, Krishna appeared to me. He embraced me. Then he disappeared. I am most unfortunate. Where is Krishna? Where is my Krishna? In this way, Lord Chaitanya told the devotees, in Kanai Natashala, while he was on his way back from Gaya, a beautiful boy with the complexion like a tamal tree, He had a moon-like face with such beautiful lotus eyes. On his lovely, lovely, enthralling, mystifying hair, it was decorated with fresh gunja berries and a peacock feather. He was wearing beautiful jewels and beautiful armlets, ankle bells. His clothes were like golden lightning. He smiled at me. He approached me. Krishna, Krishna embraced me. And then he disappeared. Where is Krishna? How can I ever express the sadness, the unfortunate condition of my life and my heart after wasting my life uselessly Krishna came to me, and then he left me continuously. He cried out, where is Krishna? Continuously, in the mood of Sri Radharani, 
in separation from Krishna, that same mood that Sri Radha had when Krishna left for Mathura, when Uddhava came back to Vrindavan to give Krishna's message. He saw the love and separation of Sri Radha, the highest, fullest, ever expanding, most perfect love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed it to the world in this mood. Now, he could not do anything without chanting the holy names. Yeah.